Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Witness and I'm your host, Katrina Hussain. Well, today, uh, Britain's Prime Minister David Cameron visited Pakistan for the first time since he took office in May. And his visit has far-reaching consequences for Pakistan's trade, education and national security. That's essentially what is the news reports regarding his visit are saying. Definitely some highlights to his visit. He spent a lot of time in educational uh, endeavors, if I want to put it that way. He visited Comsats, he visited a uh, girls' school, he visited educational institutions. And there are some commitments that have been made. And let's take a quick look at those. Uh, when he addressed a joint press conference with Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani, uh, Mr. Cameron said Pakistan needs trade rather than aid. We definitely agree with that. Apart from that, the fact uh, issues that were discussed was to give Pakistan more access. A lot of other points that were important, but education seems to be the cornerstone of British, British, uh, Britain's policy rather, to Pakistan. And uh, that is an area where certainly Pakistan needs all the help it can get. But were there any shortcomings? Were there, uh, or were there uh, any surprises in this visit? And we'll take a look at that. But apart from that, there's also another situation that prevails across the country, and that is something that we have been talking about for a long time. It doesn't seem to really have any impact, and that is the crisis of governance. Uh, Apart from the doctor's strike that is going on nationwide, I uh, believe that the strike has been withdrawn in Islamabad at least, but has spread to other cities, Karachi's hospitals and doctors are now on strike as well. And this is a disastrous situation for the country, the people who really need medical care. As it is, our medical facilities are so limited, so strained, and a strike really puts people in a crisis situation. Very few people can afford private health care. And the doctor's strike is not the only one. If you just pick up the newspapers for the past couple of weeks or even a couple of months, you will find that on an alternate day basis, there is a strike somewhere in Pakistan. Whether it is in a city where traders are on strike or whether it is in an industrial town where the laborers are on strike or whether it is um, uh, health, uh, health, well, lady health workers being on strike, it just shows a general malay that is just hanging over the country. So where are our provincial governments? Where is our federal government? What exactly is going on? Whom do we look to for our future? That's what also going to be the focus of our, visit, uh, of our talk today. So allow me to introduce my guest. But first of all, of course, we're going to talk about David Cameron's visit. My first guest in the studio, Shanaz Vazir Ali, an MA from the Pakistan People's Party. And of course, Ms. Vazir Ali, you are very involved with the task force, uh, which I will talk to you about the legality and the status of that task force at this point. Um, and Dr. Humayun Mohamed, who is from Pakistan, Tariq and Saf. We welcome you for the first time to our program. We appreciate it. You're the Secretary of the Party's International Affairs uh, Wing. And we will be joined uh, later in the program by Khurem Dastagir, an MA from the Pakistan Muslim League. And, but Ms. Vazir Ali, I'll begin with you. Uh, regarding Mr. Cameron's visit, no major surprises really that we were expecting Britain to be focusing on education. But any pleasant or unpleasant surprises in his visit? Uh, no, I don't think there were any unpleasant surprises. In fact, I think this has been a very, very positive, very productive and a very successful visit. Um, uh, this visit focused, as you just mentioned, on three main areas, on a, a set of discussions around security uh, and the war on terror, and on economic trade and investment, which was a very, very important issue for Pakistan, in which uh, the United Kingdom has been uh, very supportive by uh, taking up the issue in the European Union on free trade access. And uh, education, which he in fact said, uh, was the most important part of his program. Right. That, that I said, and is a cornerstone. Yeah, I think of so. Clear, clearly, yeah, he spoke about it at length. He showed conviction and he f showed commitment. Uh, uh, this is going to be uh, DFID, or which is the Department for International Development's largest aid program anywhere in the world for education. Mm -hmm. it, uh, UK has more than doubled its assist assistance to Pakistan, taking it up to 650 million sterling, which translates into about 1.1 billion dollars over a four-year period hmm. and this which is includes for, books and and schools and well it includes several things. things i think uh, if we take a look at the broader effort the broader effort is that pakistan has uh, uh, is while it is making certainly pakistan is committed to uh, the millennium development goals and uh, we will have to make a lot of effort to reach them. I have to interrupt you there because our that. commitment to the Millennium Development Goals is a bit of a joke now. No, I don't think it's a joke, Katrina. I think what we have to do is we have to recognize the reality. The reality is that despite all the effort, and there has been effort at the level of the provincial governments and the federal government, but despite all the efforts, we will not achieve the Millennium Development Goals in 2015. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a fact because yeah. every single child that had to finish class five should have been in school 
a year and a half exactly. ago, right? Yeah. So we know that. I think yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I did mean just MDG but, uh, regarding education. I meant MDG overall, well, overall in terms of water uh, and, think, clean, uh, and drinking water and all that. But I think that, that yeah. you're uh, absolutely uh, on target by saying that there really n needs to be um, a high level of yeah. attention. Yeah. Well, let's not to divert to the MDGs. other MDG. Let's so, stay so, with education. And we right only now. talked about the MDG, which, yeah. uh, which relates to education. education. And on education, uh, the Prime Minister from the United Kingdom said that we are committed to Pakistan uh, in a long term relationship, in an unbreakable relationship. We've had long historic relations with Pakistan. And we see education as a central, uh, central pillar of the strategy for economic growth and productivity, for social cohesion and stability, mm -hmm. and obviously for long-term long -term sustainable growth, and so do we. Yeah. And now, the fight against militancy also has, everything, you know, I mean, all Whenever we these. talk about problems, we talk about education. Just briefly before I come to you, Dr. Moman, uh, uh, just to repeat, it's a four-year program, and uh, Britain's assistance will see four million children go to school, train 90,000 teachers, and provide six million textbooks by 2015. Uh, right. But Pakistan had better do its bit in matching up yes, with that. Yes, let me clarify. Uh, 7.5 million children today are not going to primary school across the country. So if uh, the aid, which is grant, as you know, from, uh, from the United Kingdom to Pakistan, assists in putting 4 million children into school, both in urban and rural areas across Pakistan, and in every case, every province has its own particular uh, very specific plan for we'll, doing that. I want to come to the breakdown then later. Then I so think just the generally. remaining three and a half uh, million or almost four million kids who will be out of school, which are still out of school, is obviously important for us to ensure that we have uh, an, an approach that captures all the children out of school. Yeah. DFID will support almost 50 percent of them getting into school. Yeah. But certainly we need, and I would say this, that this is Pakistan's number one challenge in the education sector. Yeah to ensure, because the demand is there, it's not that parents don't want to send their children to school, they do. There are supply side issues, Absolutely. which are management, reform, governance Money. reform, better utilization of allocations, yeah. low allocations. Most people can't even afford so, the 50 But I, I would say this, uh, Katrina, if you allow me just yeah. one second, is that the government, uh, through the parliament, has made a very, very historical commitment in the 18th Amendment by saying in Article 25A, that all children aged five to 16 years of age are um, uh, to be given education by the state, to be ensured education by the state. So now it has become a, a fundamental requirement. right, a yeah. constitutional fundamental right, as opposed to being either a privilege or a mention in the principles of policy. And of course, now it also becomes incumbent upon the state. Uh, Dr. Moment, uh, of course, Mr. Cameron's visit, how do you view it? Do you think it was uh, a foreign policy coup for the government of Pakistan? Well, generally, if you see the, the visit, yes, um, it would bring uh, a good impact towards Pakistan because um, being the head of the state of uh, an influential country, it was good. But he has clearly mentioned that what we need to do, we need to um, make sure that we fight with the corruption. He has categorically mentioned that we have to broaden our tax net. He has said that we have to improve our governance. Without all these things, no matter what we do, yes, with the Article 25A included in the Constitution, we have given the rights of every child from 5 to 16 to have a free education. But if you see your actions, you are reducing your budget for education from 2.5% in 2006 to 7 to 2% in 2009 and then to 1.5% by 2010-11. Now this clearly shows that your direction is totally opposite mm -hmm. to what you are saying. Yeah, skewed. And um, when it comes to the corruption and when it comes to the governance, you have rightly mentioned that if you see wherever in Pakistan you will see strikes, you will see um, disharmony between the society, you will see that people are being agitated and now you know um, every year we see that there will be no load shedding but yet we see again even more than before. Mm. So overall it's nice to say so many good things but if I don't see those things really happening I start doubting your intentions. I start doubting the, you know, the, the government's intention of 
are they really sincere in doing this or they are just you know um, giving us the sort of concept that you know all is well.